Welcome back everyone and this is part two of our water paper comparison video. I will go ahead and put a card for part one up here and in the description below so you can find that nice and easily. In the first part of the video we did test for dispersion, light washes, thick washes, dry on dry. We did this tiny little uh, very speedy landscape to kind of see the way the colors work together and we also tested a very heavily granulating pigment. Um, between the last video and this video I've also added a swatch of phthalo green blue shade to our sheets which is a very staining color because today we're going to be doing a staining test. Now I apologize that it didn't make it into the first video. I completely forgot to add it. Staining or lifting is not something that I usually use as a technique in my watercolor paintings um, so I often forget about testing those properties for all of you but I know that uh, many of my viewers feel it's very important so I wanted to go back and do that for you. Also between the last video and this video, I sent away for the new uh, Legion Stonehenge Aqua paper series that a lot of YouTubers are reviewing right now on their channels. Now I didn't write to them as a YouTuber asking for samples or anything, I just went on their website to their online submission form for a sample of this paper. So I just got the little three sheets that they send as a sampler. You guys can go on their website and get this as well. And I did our test that we had done on the other sheets of paper. So here we have the hot press the cold press and the cold press 300 pound. Now, now I love this 300 pound cold press paper. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I would love to use it more. It does not come in blocks though. Um, from what I've seen on their website, it only comes in big sheets. So until I'm able to place an order for those large sheets of paper, it doesn't look like I can get my hands on some smaller, more manageable, i.e. cheaper to mail <laughs> um, supplies, so I'll have to wait for a sale on Jerry's or Dick Blick or something uh, to try this out. But they're uh, all in all, they're really, really pretty uh, papers. The hot press has some interesting characteristics, the interesting bleeds that we saw on some of the other hot press papers in the other video. The cold press I really enjoy. Um, it just has a nice, smooth, even uh, dry time for kind of everything. But the cold press 300 pound is the one that the colors just look so vibrant on and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to hopefully trying that out more in the future. So I just wanted to show you those three uh, before we got started. You can you know, take a little image of the screenshot here and you can compare it to the other samples from the other video if you like. All right, so let's get started with the purpose of today's video, which is comparing the staining properties on the different pieces of paper. Now, I thought a lot about whether or not I wanted to do a staining color or non-staining color. Non-staining colors are expected to lift off of paper, so I thought it would be a little bit more useful for you to see me do a staining color. Now, staining colors don't typically lift off of pages very well, um, but some of the cheaper quality paper, actually, the wood pulp papers I've seen, do lift a fair amount. Um, I have had some trouble with some different types of the newer papers I've been trying out lifting on me while I'm doing normal paintings like the edges will lift up on me so I wanted to give this staining color a chance uh, so we're going to be using this thalo green blue shade to do our staining test it's PG7 it's a very staining color and I thought it would give us a better idea of this different sizings that are in the different types of paper and um, not all of these are going to lift up perfectly they're not supposed to but I just wanted to give that as an example um, we are using the half inch Grumbacher flat brush and I'm just going to be using the edge of this to kind of uh, lift up some of the area. I'm also using clean water and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is like 95 degrees in my room. We only have AC in one area of our apartment so this is going to be kind of a, a little time lapse with some music over it so I can go ahead and put on my fan can't do that while I'm talking or you couldn't hear me. But uh, <laughs> I will see you at the end of the video and we'll take a look at the results that we got.
Alright everyone, here are the hot press samples and I also have the Bristol 2-ply since that texture is similar to the hot press but it's not a watercolor paper. And right off we can see here there's a bunch of pilling on the sample which means the paper kind of got scraped up as I was using the brush. Now to do the sample, I did all samples three times whether or not it felt like it was done at that point. Um, I went back and scrubbed and rinsed off my brush and scrubbed and rinsed off my brush and scrubbed. Um, so I did three on each sample and this one just, I mean the paper just disintegrated and came right off the top. That's to be expected. Again, it's not a watercolor paper, it's a Bristol board. It did lift well, um, so it did pull the color off well, but it did also ruin the texture of the paper. If we compare that to the Moulin de Roy, the Moulin de Roy, I think across every category in the cold press and the rough press as well, um, definitely in the hot press, this wins the category for the lifting capabilities and virtually no pilling at all. It came off really, really smoothly, took a lot of abuse, and it is in beautiful shape still. Um, compared to, this is a Canson brand paper, they also have their Heritage line. The Heritage did not lift as well, so if you were looking for a paper that you don't want your paint to lift off of, once you put it down you want to be, be able to glaze over the top of it, I think that the Heritage is actually the winner in this particular category. The Arches did okay in that regard, um, meaning if we wanted to keep our our paint on the paper and not have it lift off when we're glazing. There was a little bit more pilling in the arches than in the Canson Heritage, but I think that's my close second. I think everything else um, was somewhat equal. I've got the Stonehenge Aqua Press and the Fluid 100. Both of those pilled a fair amount. The texture of the paper is a little bit rough. The Fluid did not lift as well as the Aqua Press. So again, just to reiterate, one way or the other is not bad, it just depends on what you are painting. I don't like my paints to lift because I like to glaze, therefore I'm more likely to pick a paper like one of these three, but if you are looking for something that lifts really well, the Moulin de Roy and the Stonehenge I think are going to be your best bets in this particular category. We also have the Saunders Waterford and the Bot Botanical Ultra Smooth. Um, the Botanical a lot. This is the 50% cotton, 50% wood paper. And then the Saunders is okay. It just has a really interesting texture. Like the pattern of the paint that is left in the paper is, is a little odd. So I don't know. And in my opinion, if you want the best lifting paper, it's the Moulin de Roy. If you want the best paper for it to stay wherever it's going to be put, I would say the Arches or the Canson Heritage. All right, next up we have our largest category, which is the hardest to fit on the screen, so I'll kind of break it down into different areas. Um, for this, this is our cold press paper, and I'm going to start with the ones that did not perform very well in, in any regard, <laughs> um, or either regard, I guess. Um, whether or not they lifted or not, the paper didn't take the abuse very well. So we've got our B watercolor paper, which is the 90 pound, not the 140 pound, so it's um, not real surprising that there was some pilling. Although it wasn't substantial pilling, I think for a 90 pound paper it did okay, and it did lift pretty well. We've got the Fabriano Artistico paper, which I was kind of surprised actually. It did not do well. It tore up that paper really, really badly, and um, it's somewhere in the middle between lifting and not lifting. Um, I haven't used the Fabriano Artistico much for paintings, um, but I know a lot of people speak very highly of it. Just based on the tests that I've done here, I'm not super eager, especially when there are other options to use, um, but that's just my personal opinion. We've also got our Canson XL on the right and our Canson Montval on the left. The Canson Montval did hold up better than the Canson XL, which makes sense because this is supposed to be a slightly higher quality paper. The Canson XL pilled quite a bit, kind of tore up the paper. They both lifted about the same amount, um, maybe a little bit more so with the Montval. Then um, out of the lower performing papers, I think the best was the Pentallic Watercolor Journal paper. So this is out of the spiral bound field notebook from Pentallic. And that one, there was a little bit of pilling towards the edges and it lifted pretty well. Now for our higher performing papers, I split them up into lifts really well and doesn't lift as much so that you can kind of gauge your responses 
um, accordingly here I have this if you remember in the first video I have two different samples of the fluid 100 one is from their little 4 by 6 watercolor block and then the other one is loof, loose leaf paper and um, I would say they did about the same in the lifting department they didn't lift too much they pilled the paper a little bit but not substantially then we've got the arches, cold pressed, and then the Canson Heritage. And I do think that the arches performed better than the Canson Heritage paper. This one, um, I guess if you're going for a really soft diffuse look, like you just wanted to lift a little bit uh, of a halo effect, but it didn't do a great job and there, there weren't any edges here. Like you couldn't get a really clean, sharp line if you were trying to um, pull out a highlight and you wanted a sharpness to it in that way. The arches um, didn't lift as much as some of the other ones did, but the paper didn't pill and it held up really well. We've got the uh, Strathmore 500 and the Stonehenge Aqua, and those were pretty comparable. Uh, they both lifted about the same amount and didn't damage the paper too much, but the winner, if you're looking for a lifting paper, again, is the Moulin de Roy, just like it was in the Hot Press variety, where you got a nice, clean, crisp lift off of this, and it also did not damage the paper. So these are our final uh, comparisons. These are the rough paper and or uh, 300 pound papers. So these two papers are rough 140 pound. These three are rough cold press, and this one is 300 pound rough. Uh, maybe I can switch them like this. Maybe that'll <laughs> help a little bit with uh, our visualization of where everything is lying out. I think that the worst performer in this category was the Canson Heritage Rough Press 140 pound. Um, it didn't hold up very well. It lifted out but had a weird pattern kind of left behind. Um, none of these papers pilled a ton, um, but it just didn't lift as crisply as some of the other ones did. Uh, we've got, I would say, the Canson Heritage Cold Press 300 pound would have been next in terms of just like it roughed up the paper quite a bit, didn't lift as much. Um, the arches didn't rough the paper up, but it also didn't lift. And then we've got our kind of more liftable ones with our Stonehenge Aqua 300 pound, um, our 300 pound rough from Canson Heritage and our 140 pound rough from Moulin de Roy. And again, the winner, if you are looking for a lifting paper, is the Moulin de Roy. So once again, even though it has a rough texture, it lifts cleanly off the page um, for a phthalo staining color. That's about as good as you could hope for. With the cold press varieties, I think that I prefer the Stonehenge Aqua Press a little bit over the Canson Heritage in terms of the way the lifted area looks, but it's not a huge difference. And again, if we are going for our high quality paper that does not lift, that you don't want the paints to move, I think the Arches wins in this category. Alright, so just to recap with uh, some winners for each category. In each category, I'm looking for papers that don't pill um, so that the paper isn't destroyed underneath, um, but that I have a category for if you want it to lift or if you do not want it to lift. So for the 300 pound papers, uh, out of the ones that I tried, the Canson Heritage was the best 300 pound paper that lifted well and did not pill, while the Arches Cold Press 300 pound was the best in the category for not lifting as much. For our cold pressed papers, I've got our winners being Moulin de Roy um, for lifting and our Arches Cold Press for not lifting, um, but I do have a runner up for the lifting category and that's the Strathmore 500 series. I thought it was very, very close. The Moulin de Roy is still brighter and lighter in that removed area, but the Strathmore 500 was a, a strong competitor as well. And then for our hot press papers, for lifting, again, Moulin de Roy, and then the Canson Heritage hot press one for the not lifting category in terms of also not pilling. And finally, um, I just, I don't have very many rough papers, so I don't want to do a complete comparison in them because I think there were only, what, two in the 140 pound variety, but I just wanted to show once again that Moulin de Roy had a nice clean lift on this textured paper. So. 
I hope that review was helpful and that between part one and part two you can find a watercolor paper that suits your needs for your style of painting. Again, if you want to leave any comments below about your favorite types of paper for lifting or not lifting or anything else that we've talked about in these two videos, uh, feel free to do that. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I will see you next time.